Uric acid, that's a good, that, so so everybody knows, I think everybody knows a connection between uric acid and gout. You've heard of gout. Gout is a very painful arthritis that usually occurs in the toe, the big toe. It's well known, it's famous and all that. And that's because the uric acid forms into urate crystals. Remember, all acids become can become salts. And salts, when they come out of, when, when there's not enough fluid, they crystallize. And you know that because you can take water and then you can pour salt in it and it'll dissolve. What dissolves? The sodium and the chloride spread apart. They're in water, they're in solution. But when you've put too much in, you've hit excess, now you've reached the saturation point, now the sodium and chloride are coming back together. And you've got the formation of salt. You can actually see the salt crystals or sugar, whatever it is, in, 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 in the solution now. The other thing is that these are also the cofactors in the enzymatic reactions of coenzyme A, FAD, NAD. You all know NAD, NAD+, plus. everyone's using NAD. Well, that's a nucleotide. Anyway, when these nucleotides are broke down, they produce what are called uric acid. Now, uric acid in high doses has always been associated as being dangerous, right? You don't want high uric acid levels, and so they give people uric acid, which is a byproduct of pure metabolism turns out to be really really important and we use it as a biomarker and usually it's been associated with high levels of uric acid mean that someone's going to have cardiovascular problems going to have uh, uh, perhaps diabetes uh, there was a lot of what do they call chronic the d word which doesn't exist remember um, anyway here's a very important thing to know about uric acid. It's always been a report, reported to be associated with high levels are really bad, right? Really unhealthy. Okay. Well, guess what? Guess what? Turns out not to be true. Actually, uric acid has two roles, what, depending on whether or not it's outside of a cell or inside of a cell. When it's outside of the cells, it's what is known as an antioxidant. It is. It contributes to 60% of the antioxidant capacity of our blood is due to uric acid. That's pretty powerful stuff. So you want that. You don't want to not have it. And in fact, there are lots of studies that show that low uric acid, low uric acid is associated with all kinds of problems, including Alzheimer's, including uh, MS, including uh, Parkinson's and, and things like that. <clears throat> but anyway, what's interesting is that the, the kidneys actually filter and reabsorb 90% of the uric acid that goes through there. You know what that tells you? That tells you that the body really considers it important. That's what it tells you. You don't have to read a book. You don't have to ask anybody. The body says, this stuff's important. We're not letting it get away. So 90% comes back. When it's inside the cell, actually, it is a, it actually becomes an oxidant. Here's the other thing that's very amazing. So we don't have an enzyme that allows us to turn uric acid into a lantuan. So it turns out to be a really potent and powerful and necessary antioxidant that keeps us alive. However, we don't have the enzyme, L-glenolactone, that allows us to make ascorbic acid out of glucose, which all other animals except for primates and guinea pigs and, and, and uh, fruit bats can make, right? Dog, cats, elephants, giraffes, they all make vitamin C, ascorbic acid all day long, right? We don't. So the idea is that, well, maybe they're compensating. You know, maybe that's it. Maybe because we're able to make that, we don't need as much. That made me think, well, wait a minute. Well, then, because the problem is, is that they've used uric, they've, 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 they've tried to use it. They say, well, what if we inject uric acid into a, a condition that needs antioxidants? And it turns out that it's very, very difficult to use clinically because it crystallizes and you wind up getting pain problems and it doesn't work. So then I said, well, let's take a look at what about vitamin C? What if you had a lot of vitamin C? Maybe you wouldn't need that much of an effect of the uric acid. Hmm. What did I find? I found that it made sense. Of course it makes sense. Okay, so basically how does... Uh, how does uric acid and all that stuff work? The, re the way it works is this. If you get it, if you get an infection, you get you get trauma, you get any kind of damage, and that it sets off a whole cascade of, of, of reactions inside the cell. And one of the main cells that alerts the systems and wakes up all the systems to heal is uric acid inside the cell. Outside the cell, it's an antioxidant. Inside the, it does it by waking up that and it stimulates oxidation. You need oxidation. You want to go in there and kill bacteria, kill, uh, eat up dead tissues and so basically but it does all these things it, pull, it pulls in platelets it does the whole it does all these things to clean up wounds yeah it's really amazing um so that's what uric acid does so it's considered to be one of the major what they call alarmins alarmins are molecules inside of a cell that alarm but, but here's here's the problem because high uric acid is associated with 
increased mortality. There was a study, uh, they, looked, they looked at people 7.5 years and they found that uric acid, high uric acid was uh, correlated to high all-cause mortality, which is not good. The, the risk of death was increased 39% with an increase of, of just 0.6 millimoles per liter of the uric acid. So what I'm saying is, okay, so uric acid is very difficult. We need it in the, in the cells. We also need it outside the cells. We need it in the amount that we need, nothing more, nothing less. So, but we do need a lot of antioxidants, especially if we're living in a world that is full of ox, that is full of things that are causing us to be oxidized. And that's why vitamin C is so important. So this study, as I found, is very interesting. So here's a study, 47,000 men over 20 years, over a 20 year period, found that those taking vitamin C supplements had 44% low, lower gout. 2008 study, 1,400 men indicated that significantly lower blood levels of uric acid found in men who consumed the most vitamin C as compared to those who didn't. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. So anyway, it turns out that it's really, it's really good. good. So, though, so uh, that's how we can do it. And where do you get it? You get it, where do you get it? Where do you get ascorbates? You get ascorbates in all the things that we talk about. Broccoli, kale, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, you name it, cauliflower. It's all, that's what it is.